In this problem, we're looking for the voltage V. And the method for doing that is to essentially take the resistor out of the circuit, find the Thevenin equivalent of everything else, and then use that simplified circuit to find the desired voltage V. A number of ways to proceed here. Uh, since I see a lot of current sources in here, I'm going to guess that it might be easy to find the short circuit current. And once we found that value, we could then find the Thevenin voltage as short circuit current times the Thevenin resistance. So let's proceed with that and see what happens. First thing I'll do is pull this device out of there and then apply the look back resistance technique to look into those terminals and determine the equivalent resistance. So look back resistance method says this is an open, this is an open, this is an open, so those disappear. This resistor is now dangling in the air so it can be removed. And let me clean up the extraneous Oops. We'll go ahead and clean up the try again. Clean up all this extraneous wiring. See what we have left. So it looks like we have two series resistors and RT our Thevenin resistance is 8 ohms. So let me pull up the original circuit again. So between those terminals, we connect a piece of wire and define a direction for the short circuit current. Now the problem comes, how do we find that? Um, initially the circuit looks a little bit formidable, but with the three different sources here, maybe superposition might come in handy. And uh, another reason for suggesting that superposition might be a good idea uh, is that if, for example, if we're trying to find out what happens when our 6 amp source is active, then this turns into an open and this turns into an open. Circuit simplifies greatly at that point. So let's go ahead and remove those devices or effectively set them to zero. And again, this resistor dangling in the air is a non-player. Now we basically have, if you like to think of it this way, a zero ohm resistor in parallel with an eight ohm resistor net zero. So that means these devices can be removed. So 6 amps circulating in this direction, which is opposite to the defined direction for ISC, that means we've got minus 6 amps. And I should have earlier said that that was for the contribution just due to the 6 amp source. So that's one third of the problem. Again, let me get back to the original. Next, I want to find the short circuit current due to the 4 amp source. So let me go ahead and disable those two. Now another thing to always be on the lookout for is again places where you can remove resistances. Anytime I have a resistor in series with a current source, I can remove that resistor and replace it by a short circuit. Uh, the rationale for that is, um, for example, the voltage between these two points will kind of adjust itself to whatever is necessary to make the rest of the circuit work, but this current is always going to be 4 amps. So that means that there is always a 32 volt drop right here. But again, the nature of the current source is such to maintain 4 amps circulating here no matter what. So effectively you can think of it as having the ability to adjust its own I'll call that V sub I, its own current so that the brand, so that the 4 amp current is maintained. This is maybe a little bit easier seen if you think about the case of 
resistor in parallel with the voltage source, say I had 9 volts back here, I will get 9 volts here no matter what. So that means as far as the rest of the circuit is concerned, I could just delete that one. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that resistor in series with the current source. Now hopefully it's clear that we have a current divider. I have 4 amps coming in. Part of it divides that way, the other part divides this way. So ISC4 is the conductance of interest. That's our 2 ohm resistor divided by the total parallel conductance times our 4 amp source and that works out to be 3 amps. So we're two-thirds of the way home. Incidentally, if you weren't real comfortable with removing that resistor, if I put that back in here, 8 ohms, you see that it doesn't contribute any difference to what's happening on this side of the circuit because the currents diverge but then they come back and so you're back to 4 amps at that point. So this device has no contribution to the remainder of the circuit. Again, we're two-thirds done. Let's go ahead and pull up the original circuit. So for the last part, let's find the short circuit current due to the 15 amp source. So we'll take those two out. I'll remove that resistor for the same reasons discussed earlier. So we have another current divider. Got 15 amps coming in. Some goes that way, and some goes this way. So, the current we want is 3.75 amps. So that's our third circuit analysis. Let's go back to the original and put it all together. So our total short circuit current is the contribution of the 6 amp source, which was minus 6, contribution of the 3, I'm sorry, the 4 amp source, which is plus 3, and the 15 amp source contributed 3.75 all together. That's minus 750 milliamps. If I multiply that by the 8 ohm 7 in resistance. That gives me my voltage as 6 volts. So let me then replace all of the circuit with its 7 and equivalent and we'll connect that 7 and equivalent up to the 4 ohm source. So this is just a straightforward voltage divider problem. And we end up with our final desired result of two.